uh, running in Milwaukee today and uh, conditions permitting. We're going to attempt to get out there a little later today and uh, give you an update on what's happening there in West Allis or suburban Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where the Card Indy cars, where we are told that Al Unser Sr. has picked up a ride also. We assume that means in the Penske stable, but Mario Andretti, Michael Andretti, Al Unser Jr., as well as Al Unser Sr., will be, of course, some of the names contesting for the next feature win on the car Indianapolis Car Trail. Now, that event will be seen in its entirety on Sunday, the 7th of June at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on ESPN. Back to the action here in Dover, the leader, Bobby Allison. Bobby Allison pulling away a little bit, but the battle is back in the pack for second spot as his young son, Davey, makes a move inside of Earnhardt, and apparently Earnhardt's car really pushing in the corner, going up across the racetrack here door to door in turn one. Davey Allison has the inside groove, and he will take second spot away. Trouble on the front stretch. Morgan Shepard has tagged the wall. Car number 26 looping on the front straightaway. A couple other cars sliding. There is Shepard's car, and one car slides down and hits him. That is the Mike Potter machine. Potter in the car number 81 tagged Shepard's car in the Quaker State Buick, and we are under yellow again. Jerry, the speculation that we had was that Morgan was in the process of backing up, and with that unusual line that he was running, had he used up the tires. Now, there was damage before Potter got into him on both the front end and the rear end, and the rear end damage seemed to be the more significant. Maybe that was the initial contact. Here you see the Conover, North Carolina's driver, driver's car sitting there on the inside of the front stretch. Morgan Shepard. Rick Wilson was also involved, and he's the wheel has come off the car, and part of the fender, he's having trouble just hanging onto the steering wheel. There is Rick Wilson with the right front of the car, heavily damaged, the Kodak film Oldsmobile. He will bring that car down pit road. Tony Glover and the crew there standing by, as you see, he's trying to get the car stopped. They're awaiting to service the car. The two of them were running in 8th and 11th position. Morgan was running in 8th. Rick was running in 11th. That would indicate, without seeing a replay or hearing a report, that Shepard got into the fence, bounced off, and then collected Rick Wilson. Dick Bergman is down there with Bobby Allison. Well, Allison just gave his crew the OK sign through the window. He also took a cool drink as well. He might. He's going to take a set of four tires on his automobile, as is virtually everybody else on pit road. Marty, what's going on at your end? Well, Davey Allison is in also for fuel and four tires and everything running very smoothly. He's taking no additional water. I got to tell you, I don't know how the crew guys are standing. I don't know how the drivers are standing. The heat inside this uh, pit lane, there is no air circulating down here. There you can see the frantic activity on pit road. Everybody is in. And Jerry, you know, we were talking to Rusty a little while earlier about the cool suit and things really weren't that bad for him. It's the crew members that are really suffering through this intense heat as they assist Morgan Shepard from his car. There's Potter. Mike Potter getting an aid from uh, some of the safety crew getting away from his car and they will put Shepard on the stretcher and take him in to be checked out. A pretty tough lick. You see the driver compartment held up on the Quaker State car. A couple of contacts. The car came up across the track and apparently collected the car number four of Rick Wilson. Let's take a look and see what happened. We can see Here's the car number 26 in front of the Rick Wilson car from the in-car Kodak camera. Tire. Tire. Boom. Shepard is sideways. The back end against the concrete contact. Wilson has nowhere to go. Left front fender. Ouch. Wilson comes on through past the flag stand, and Shepard's car will spin again and come down and contact the in inside concrete wall. Here's the last part of it. Shepard's car, the Quaker State machine, spins, loops once, loops twice, backs against the concrete guardrail inside or concrete wall, and comes to a halt. Jerry, I think we need to make a comment here about the tire situation. You see Potter sliding down. Morgan's car is dead in the water, and Potter gives him a third significant wrap on the right front. Now, let's look at it one more time in real time. Morgan Shepard, the Quaker State Buick, taking three distinctively different and hard licks. Great shot from the in-car camera. Coming down the back stretch, going to turn three. We're looking inside the Rick Wilson car, the Kodak Film Oldsmobile. There's Shepard in three, headed out of turn four. Suddenly, boom! He's sideways and straight ahead comes Rick Wilson trying to avoid it. There's no way he can avoid it. The car right in front of him, he tags him in the left front fender. 
the traditional route of, a, of avoiding a crash simply didn't work in that situation, Jerry. Uh, Rick was too close, and as Morgan hit the fence, he came right off into the path of Rick, and Rick did what most race drivers' instinct would tell them to do, but it was not the right move this time. Well, you heard all the veterans tell us the normal thing to do is to stay off the brake and drive the car. Straight ahead usually is the best way to go. That's exactly what Rick did, but he had nowhere to go as the car number 26, the Shepard car, slid up across fr in front of him, and he tagged it. Marty Reed is uh, down in the pit area in the hospital area. Down to Marty. Well, Morgan Shepard, uh, walking in under his own power, did not get a chance to uh, say anything to him. He looked like he was okay. Or, I'm sorry, Mike Potter going in. We're waiting for Morgan Shepard. Mike would seem to be okay. And it uh, looks as though uh, we'll be going back out on course right now. Well, Morgan was assisted onto the stretcher. He appeared to be conscious as the uh, safety crewman assisted him, keeping everything uh, straight. And as they boarded him onto the stretcher, no word yet as to the exact condition of Morgan Shepard. What an emotional roller coaster for Shepard and that team. A second place finish uh, last week at Charlotte. He did sustain some second degree burns on his feet and legs as the uh, ambulance and safety crew are now backing up with the Morgan Shepard car. They will take him in, or Morgan Shepard rather, on the stretcher. They will take him into the infield care center very gently, get him checked out there. And uh, Morgan lying on the stretcher, and uh, I'm sure they will take him out with the infield care center doctors, and hopefully we can find out later that he is okay. Morgan Shepard taking a pretty heavy impact with a concrete wall and a couple of race cars here at Dover. We will, of course, continue to uh, document that story for you. Morgan Shepard, uh, the driver, the veteran driver from the North Carolina area who has won over $1 million in his Winston Cup career and 143 of them taking place this year. on that Winston, no doubt, cigarette, leaning over the flag stand, anticipating letting this field loose as they come around.